Hello everyone, Only Draven here again, and today we're doing another tutorial in Minecraft Sky Factory 4. Today we're continuing our look at the Tinker's Construct mod, specifically how to make different weapons and different tools. Um, now I have done some basic tutorials on how do you uh, get started with the Tinker's Construct mod. If you haven't seen those or are unfamiliar with this mod, I will link those uh, videos down in the description of this video. You may want to check those out first. Um, but today we're going to specifically work on tools and weapons, and I've been asked to do this one quite often. Uh, a lot of times I get a lot of questions that say, what is the best weapon to make or what is the best tool? And a lot of that is really subjective and can determine on your play style. So we're going to look at a couple different things. Uh, if you find this video helpful and you like it, please be sure to click like. But most importantly, please remember to hit that subscribe button. That way you can see all my videos and tutorials as they come out. Okay, so to get started today, first thing we're going to want to make is a book called Materials and You. And for that, you just need a regular book and one blank pattern. Now, this is the basic guide to Tinker's Constructs using tools and materials and modifiers. Now, this does not cover armor. We're going to cover that in a separate video. Uh, but this also does cover how to make a smeltery, um, which we're just going to be using a normal melter for today's tutorial. Uh, again, that's a tutorial you can find on my channel. So, looking at the books, we're going to start with the introduction. It's going to talk just about different things like making smelteries and such. Uh, so that's all the bottom. We're going to jump right to tools. And there are multiple different tools that you can make. And under tools, weapons are considered a tool. So you find broadsword, longsword, rapier, cleaver, things of that nature. Um, when you go into that section, it'll give you just a little bit of information about repairing them and how to make them. But then we'll get into the different tools specifically, such as the pickaxe, the shovel, and it tells you the components that you need to make it. Now, if you already have your setup ready to go with all of your different uh, tables and forges, you go to the tool forge specifically, it shows you again a picture of all of those different types of weapons and tools you could make. Say hypothetically we want to make a pickaxe. Click on that. It tells us that we need down the bottom right there a tool rod, a pickaxe head, and a binding. Those three items are put together, you'll make a pickaxe. You can also name it in the top part next to the right of tool forge. There's a bar before you take the completed pickaxe out of the completed spot. You can name that tool something if you wish to. So how do you make it? Well, again, it's just going to be like put anything else. You're going to go ahead and you're going to take the cast of the specific items, place it in your melter or smeltery casting table, and then pour the type of material that you're wanting to use over top of it. Or if it's a material that doesn't require pouring, you can go directly into a part builder. You can set your cast in there or just the pattern itself, the material you're making it out of, and it will pull you the finished item right to the right there. So... How do you know which one to use? What's the best thing to use? Well, that again is subjective. Once you determine what you're looking to make, let's just say we're going to pick a weapon today. We're going to make a cleaver. Now, cleaver is a two-handed weapon. It does a lot of damage, uh, but it is a little bit slower, and it uh, does take up two hands, so you're not able to use a shield. You have a hard, really good armor or a really high life, and you're not worried about taking as much damage, cleaver is a great component. But if you're wanting to use a sword and shield, then you're looking more of your broadsword, longsword, rapier. But we're going to go ahead and start with making a cleaver today. And it says that I need two tough tool rods, large sword plate, and a large plate. And I have those three casts already ready to go. Again, what material do we make it out of, though? Well, that's where we want to go ahead and look at modifiers. Modifiers are components that can be added to, to a completely different thing, which will also boost its skills, but that comes after you make it. First thing is the materials themselves. So if we look at tool materials, you're going to get a section where it lists all the different type of materials that the different tools can be made out of. Now, not every tool can always be made out of every type of item. So let's take a look here. The first one, it says out of Naga scale. So it says it can be used for a head. When it states head, it does not mean headpiece of armor. It means the head of like an arrowhead or a pickaxe head. It's talking specifically about a tool or weapon head. Under steel leaf, you'll see it can be used as a head, a handle, or an extra. Because some weapons and tools have an extra slot where you can put in anything. So as you go through, you want to find the different types of items that are useful to you. On the left-hand side and the far right-hand side, you'll see the different types of components that can be made using that material. So let's just pick a relatively easy one and we'll look at obsidian. With obsidian, if you make a pickaxe out of obsidian, you'll see that it has these different specifications. We'll tell you how, how the durability is like. Uh, mining level says cobalt, so you can mine up to cobalt. 
Um, and then that's if it's used as a head, as a handle, there's additional modifiers, and it's extra. But you'll see that it also lists something called durite. That's how I pronounce it. And it says, doesn't taste as good as it sounds. Your tool lasts longer most of the time. So that is a modifier given by using obsidian, which gives you a longer durability. If we look over at bone to our left-hand side, you'll see that on, as a head, you get splintering, hitting them more to deal more damage. So the more you hit them, the more damage it does. Whereas if you use it as a handle, fractured, your tool's damage is increased. So fractured, splintering, durite, there are different modifiers that you can get using different materials in your weapons or your tools. Now for today's tutorial, I'm gonna just go ahead and use Manulian. Uh, Manulian, if used as the head of a tool, makes insatiable. During combat, you're, you deal more damage, but also consume more and more durability. So the more you fight it, the weaker the weapon will get. As a handle, it gives you cold-blooded deal increased damage to targets that have full health. And then with the extra slot, cold-blooded again. So I'm going to make mine completely out of Manulian, but you can mix and match. You could have a head Manulian. You could have a handle that's copper, uh, obsidian extra. You can mix and match those perks based on your play style and the type of weapon you want to make. We're going to make a cleaver today, and we're going to make it out of Manulian. I've already got some poured out. So let's go ahead and grab our three casts, and we're going to go ahead and make those components. So again, we're going to need each one of these, a large plate, a large sword blade, and two tough tool rods. So I'm going to go ahead and put the first one in, right-click, and it will pour the Manulian over top of the cast. Once the cast is completely filled, then a percentage will start counting from 0% to 100% to let us know that the liquid has solidified. As you can see, progress is at 10%. We're going to go ahead and skip right ahead to 100 all right, here we go. That one's done. So we can go ahead and right click that. Now we have our Manulian large plate. Let's go ahead and take the cast out. Now we need a tough tool. We actually need two of these. <laughs> or the, the blade, we just need one. So we're going to pour Manulian over it again. Let that get all the way up to 100. All right, now we've got our blade. Pull that one out. And now we need two of the tough tool rods. We're going to pour and make those. Okay, and there's one. Have that, pour our second one out. Luckily, these ones harden a lot quicker than the uh, larger parts do, and they require a little bit less material. Okay, and there is our second one. So now we have a Manulian large plate, Manulian large sword blade, and two Manulian tough tool rods. So let's go ahead back over to our tool maker, our tool forge. Go ahead and click on the weapon we're making, a cleaver, and now we can put those components in the available slots. As you can see, that gives us a Manulian cleaver. We're just going to name this one ODG cleaver. Pull that out. Now we have a weapon. We scroll over, it says ODG cleaver, and it gives you its basic abilities. You can see this one has cold blooded, insatiable, and beheading two. So those are because I've combined all those different items to it. Now, um, it says level clumsy because I haven't leveled this up yet. As I level this up by fighting more creatures and killing things, I will get um, a stronger level, which also unlocks different perks. For example, hitting shift, you see it says there, it says the attack, and then modifiers. Modifiers are how many different modifications you can do to a specific weapon or tool to increase its skills and abilities. All right, so let's take a look at that. Going back to our book. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at modifiers. As we mentioned before, modifiers are different items that can be added to different components to give them additional abilities. For example, haste. Haste, if you add redstone to a weapon or to a tool, it increases the, if it's a tool, it increases the redstone uh, dust, increased mining speed. Uh, if it's to a weapon, it increases attack speed and it takes and you can put multiple levels which means you can use more than one redstone to level up that ability now some items and modifiers can only be used on a specific weapon or a specific tool type so um, let's just say for example we look at fortified so fortified is specifically going to be used on a pickaxe. As you can see, it bounces between the different type of pickaxe and tools, but it's not something that can be used on a weapon. It increases the mining level. Mining level depends on the material used, so which, what you make it out of. It can also downgrade the level. It requires no modifier spot in order to do that. That's handy. But since we're looking at weapons, let's look at weapons specifically. So I've chosen three specific modifiers to use today. I'm going to use lapis, quartz, and a fermented spider eye. 
Let's see what those do. So if we go to Lapis, we'll start with Spider Eye. So Spider Eye is Bane of Anthropods. If I add this modifier to a weapon, it deals massive damage to spiders and silverfish. If I use Lapis, I get Luck, which adds fortune or looting. If it's on a tool, it use, has the chance to increase the luck, but if it, and it's adding more lapis, we'll only use one modifier. It is not compatible with silky. That means if the ever um, modifier that adds the silky cannot go on the same one that uses luck. Those two abilities are directly opposed to each other. And then the last one we said we're gonna use is quartz, which is sharp. It increases the attack damage. Uh, it, different weapons scale differently. And again, multiple levels. You can add multiple levels to that. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So to modify, you're going to use the very first tab in your tool forge, take the item of your choice, set it in the center. Now the item that you want to use to modify it, you can put in one of these slots. As you can see, I'm putting it in almost any one, and it'll work perfectly fine. I'm going to go ahead and take the ODG cleaver out. And as you can see, it now has these two little blue balls on it. It has changed the way that it looks because I've added that modifier. I now have luck one on this item. I have two modifiers left. So now we're gonna go ahead and put quartz in. Same kind of thing. Now, as you can see, it's gone from a purple to a purple and white blade, and it adds sharp. And each modifier is changing the way my weapon or tool looks. And the last one is a fermented spider eye. See, it has this little red eyeball down here near the hilt. Take that off. And now I have cold-blooded, insatiable, insatiable, beheading two, luck one, sharp, and bane of anthropods. So this weapon has a multiple different types of skills and abilities, and that's because of the different items I used to make it, as well as the different modifiers. And now I'm wielding this really, really large sword. Raw. Okay, so that's really all that's needed for the different type of weapons and tools that you're looking at. Again, it's important to make sure you go through the materials in your book, comparing the different types of materials you may want to make your weapon and tool out of, and then as well as comparing the different modifiers to give you the desired skills that you want. You may want to have multiple weapons depending on the different situations that you're placing yourself in. There's nothing wrong with that. Same with tools. Uh, but if you have any questions about this tutorial or any of my tutorials, uh, please be sure to throw those down in the comments and I'll get back with you as quickly as I can, as well as if you have any recommendations or suggestions for other tutorials that you'd like to see in Sky Factory 4, please throw those down there as well. I'm always looking for new ideas. Um, and you can also directly uh, send me an email through my website, onlydraven.com, with any recommendations, suggestions, or feedback that you have as well as get links to all my different videos, social accounts, streaming schedule, and other information about ODG only game. So um, that is going to do us for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.